Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, reading with my best friend Yerena. Far into the night, while the other creatures slept, Charlotte worked on her web. Fears ripped out a few of the orb liners near the center. She left the radial liners alone, as they were needed for support. As she worked here, eight legs were a great help to her. So were her teeth. She loved to weave and she was an expert at it. When she had finished ripping things out, here web looked something like this. A spider can produce several, several kinds of thread. She uses a dry soft thread for foundation lines and she uses a sticky set for snare liners, the ones that catch, catch and hold incest. Charlotte decided to use her dry thread for writing the new message. If I write the word terrific with sticky thread, she thought every bug that comes along would go stuck in it and spoil the effect. Now, let's see the first letter is T. Charlotte climbed to a point at the top of the left hand side of the web. Swinging her spinnerets into position, she attached her thread and then dropped down. As she dropped, her spinning tubes went into action and she let out a thread. At the bottom, she attached the thread. This formed the upright part of the letter T. Charlotte was not satisfied, however. She climbed up and made another attachment, right next to the fist. Then she carried the line down, so that she had a double line instead of a single line. It would show up better if I make the whole thing with double lines. She climbed back up, moved over about an inch to the left, touched her spinnerets to the web, and then carried a line across to the right, forming the top of the T. She repeated this, making it double. Her eight legs were very busy, however. Now for the E, Charlotte got so interested in her walk, she began to talk to herself, as though to cheer herself up. If you had been sitting quietly in the barn cellar that evening, you would have heard something like this. Now for the R. Up we go, attach, descend, by outline, moi, attach, good, up you go, repeat, attach, the scans, by pay outline, moi, girl, stay, stay, steady now, attach, climb, attach, over to the right, by pay outline, attach, now right and down and swing, swing, set, loop and around and around. Now into the left, attach, climb, repeat, okay, e uh, e easy keep those lines together. Now then out and down for the leg of the R. Pay out line, voila, attach, ascend, repeat, good girl. And so talking to herself and spider worked as a difficult task. When it, when it was com completed, she felt hungry. She ate a small bug that she had been saving. Then she slept. Next morning, Wilbur arose and stood beneath the web. He breathed the morning air into his lungs. Drops of dew, catching the sun, made the web stand out clearly. When Lavi arrived with breakfast, there was the handsome pig, and over him, woven neatly in block letters, was the word terrific, another miracle. Lavi rushed and called Mr. Tsukamon. Mr. Tsukumon rushed and called Mrs. Tsukumon. Mrs. Tsukumon ran to the phone and called the Arables. The Arables climbed into the truck and hurried over. Everybody stood at the pig pen and stared at the web and read the word over and over, while Wilbur, who really felt terrific, stood quietly swelling out of his chest and swinging his head from side to side. Terrific! Grace Zuckerman in joyful admi admiration. It is. You are better phone as a reporter on the weekly Jbron uh, nicely and tell him what has happened. He will want to know about this. He may want to bring a photographer. There isn't a peak in the wall. State that is a traffic as our peak. The news spread. People who had journeyed to see Will Bore when he was some peak. Okay, same back again to see him now that he was terrific. That afternoon, where Mr. Zuckerman went to milk the cows and clean out the tea apps, he was still thinking about what the want rose pig he owned. Lovey, he called. There is to be no more cow manure thrown into the pig pen. I have a 
terrific pig. I want that pig to have clean, bright straw every day for his bedding. Understand? Yes, sir, said Lobby. Furthermore, said Mr. Zuckerman, I want you to start building a crate for Wilbur. I have decided to take the pig to the country fair on this September 6th. Make the crate large and paint it green with golden letters. What will the letters say? asked Lobby. They should say Zuckerman's famous pig. Lovey picked up a pitchfork and walked away to get some clean straw. Having such an important pick was going to mean plenty of extra work. He could see that. Below the apple orchard, at the end of the path, was the dump when Mr. Zuckerman threw all sorts of trash and stuff that nobody wanted anymore. Here, in a small clearing hidden by a young elders and white raspberry bushes, was an astonishing pile of old bottles and empty tin cans and dirty racks and bits of needle and broken bottles and broken headgears and broken springs and dead batteries and last month's magazines and old discarded dish mops and tattered overalls and rusty spikes and leaky pails and forgotten stoppers and useless junks of all kind, including wrong side crank for a broken ice cream piece. Tompton used a dump and licked, liked it. There were good hiding places, their excellent cover for a rat. And there, were, and there was usually a tin can with food still clinging to the inside. Templ Templeton was down the new rummaging around. When he returned to the barn, he cried in, he, he carried in his mouth and advertisements he had turned from a complete magazine. Oh, how is this? he asked, showing the ad to Charlotte. It says crunchy. Crunchy would be a good what to watch on your web. Just the wrong idea, replied Charlotte. Couldn't be worse. We don't want Sukumon to think the Wilbur is crunchy. He might start to think Wilbur is crunchy. He might start thinking about crisp, crunchy bacon and tasty hen. That would put ideas to his head. We must advertise Wilbur's noble qualities, not his tastiness. Go get another world, please, Templeton. The rat looked disgusted, but when he sneaked away to the dump and was back in a while with a strip of cotton cloth. How's this? he said. It's a label of an old shirt. Charlotte examined the label. It said Preach Shrunk. I'm sorry, Templeton, she said, but Preach Shrunk is out of the question. We want Sukumon to think Wilbur is nicely filled out, not all shrunk up. I'll have to ask you to try again. What do you think I am, a messenger boy? Crumbled the rat. I'm not going to spend all my tie chasing down to the dump after advertising material. Just once more, please said Charlotte. I'll tell you what I'll do, said Templeton. I know where there's a package of salt flakes in the woodshed. There was writing on it. I'll bring you a piece of the package. He climbed the rope that hung on the wall and disappeared into the peered stove of hole in the kiln. When he came when he came back he had a strip of blue and white cardboard in his teeth. There, he said, triumphantly, how that Charlotte reads the word with new radiant action. What does he mean? asked Charlotte, who had never used any soap flakes in her life. How should I know? said Templeton. You ask four words and I bought them. I suppose the next thing you'll want to me to fetch is a dictionary. Together they studied the soap ad with new radiant action, repeated Charlotte slowly. Wilbur, she called. Wilbur, who was asleep in the straw, jumped up. Run around, commanded Charlotte. I want to see you in action to see if you are radiant. Wilbur raced to the end of his yard. Now back again, faster, said Charlotte. Wilbur galloped back. His skin shone. His tail had a fine, tight curl in it. Jump into the air, cried Charlotte. Wilbur jumped as high as he could. Keep your knees straight and touch the ground with your ears, called Charlotte. Wilbur obeyed. Do a backflip with a half twist in it, cried Charlotte. Will went over backwards, writhing and twisting as he went. Okay, Wilbur, said Charlotte. You can go back to sleep. Okay, Templeton, the soap ad. We'll do it, I guess. I'm not sure Wilbur's action is exactly radiant, but it's interesting. Actually, said Wilbur, I feel radiant. Do you? said Charlotte, looking at him with affection. Well, you're a good little pig and radiant you shall be. I'm in this thing pretty deep now. I might as well go the limit. Tired from his romp, while Boar lay down in a clean strap, he closed his eyes. The straw seemed scratchy, not as comfortable as the cow mantle, which was always delicately soaked into line in. 
So he pushed the strap to one side and stretched it out in the manual, while Boris sighed. It had been a busy day, his fears day of all began terrific. Dozens of people had visited his yard during the afternoon and he had had to stand and pose, looking as terrific as he could. Now he was tired. Ben had arrived and seated herself quietly on their stool in the corner. Tell me a story, Charlotte, said Wilbur as he lay waiting to sleep for calm. Tell me a story. Charlotte, though she too was tired, did what Wilbur wanted. Once upon a time, she began, I had a beautiful cousin who managed to build her web across a small steam. One day, a tiny fish leaped into the air and got tangled in the web. My cousin was very much surprised, of course. The fish was stretching widely. My cousin hardly dared tackle it, but she did. She swooped down and threw great masses of wrapping material around the fish and fought bravely to capture it. Did she succeed? asked Quilber. It was a never to be forgotten battle, said Charlotte. There was the fish, caught only by one fin, and its tail while it trashing and shining in the sun. There was the web, hanging dangerously under the weight of the fish. How much did the fish wait? asked Wilbur eagerly. I don't know, said Charlotte. There was my cousin, slipping in, dodging out, beating nervously over the head by the wildly trashing fish, dancing in, dancing out, throwing her threats and fighting hard. Fishes were left around the tail. The fish slashed back, and left to the tail and right into the midsection. The fish slashed back, when she dodged to one side and threw a right and another right to the fin. Then a hard left to her head while the web swayed and stretched. Then what happened? asked Wilbur. Nothing, said Charlotte. The fish lost the fight. My cousin wrapped it up so tight it couldn't bush. Then what happened? Nothing. My cousin kept the fish for a while and then when she got good and ready she ate it. Tell me another story, begged Wilbur. So Charlotte told him about another cousin of hers who was an astronaut. What is an aeronaut? asked Wilbur. A balloonist, said Charlotte. My cousin used to stand on her head and let out enough, switch to form a balloon. Then she'd let to go and be lifted into the air and carried upwards of the warm wind. wind. Is it true? asked Wilbur. Or are you just making it up? It's true, replied Charlotte. I have some very remarkable cousins. And now, Wilbur, it's time you want to sleep. Sing something, begged Wilbur, closing his eyes. So Charlotte sang a, lo a lovely white wild cr cricket chirped in her grass grasses and their born grew dark. This was the song the sun. Sleep, sleep, my love, my only, deep, deep in the dung and the dark. Be not afraid and be not lonely. This is the hour when frogs and thrushes praise the wood from the woods and the rushes. Rest from care, my one and only, deep in the dung and the dark. But Wilbur was already asleep. When the song ended, Ben got up and went home.